Hello everybody, welcome back to the Desmo Works channel and today is the second video on servicing my Ducati 748 which I'm going to be using in Thunderbike Sport this year. So if you remember from the last video where we left off is I have to service the forks so that's going to be bushes and seals change and then fresh fork oil and set the air gap correctly. I'm going to do a quick clutch service just to check that the stack height is correct and just grease up the slipper ramps on the slipper clutch and then just going to change the fuel filter on the fuel pump so not not that one that's a spare tank I've just got set up on there the tank is just down on the floor um, because the fuel filter can be one of the reasons why you get an intermittent issue as well so I just want to make sure that that's done and dusted in a good service item um, excuse the the hat and the extra layers of clothing. The UK is taking a really uh, quick downturn in temperature and it's freezing in my garage even with the heaters on. So um, first things first, let's get into the clutch, get that stripped down and I'll talk you through how to check the plates and everything. Okay, let's crack on with that. Okay, first thing to do, take off the carbon clutch cover, which is one, two, three, four bolts. So let's just do that quickly. Okay, that's exposed the clutch pressure plate for us. So what we need to do first to get into the clutch is take the pressure plate off, which means undoing the four springs. So with the uh, pressure plate off, you can see that we're through to the plates. So I've got aluminium friction plates. So getting those off just means pulling them out and then I've got a magnet to pull the steels off as I get to each of the steels so I'm just going to take all of those out now and uh, the, I the idea is keep the plates in the order that they come out so you know which way around you've got everything should have pointed out that I can just take the clutch center plate off on this on this model of clutch so I could have just pulled it off that way but on your clutch you'll have to take the stack out Okay, so what I'm going to do is just measure this and I'll talk through the setup I've got and why. Okay, so here's the clutch pack. Now being a slipper clutch, you have to have a friction on the back because otherwise when the slipper operates you can drop in a steel and a, a friction on the front. So the setting for the clutch should be 38 millimeters plus or minus two millimeters. To measure your service limit, you wanna grab the pack and just drop the, the steel plates through so they don't interfere with the tangs. Then pick it up, grab it as tight as you can, and then just get a measurement. Oh, don't get your glove caught, get a measurement across there. So we've got, I don't know if you can see that, 38.2 so it's still in spec what I'm going to do is just quickly separate out all the friction plates and the steels so I can just look for where we just want to make sure that we've got still got raised edges. So we've got no undue wear and tear. Then I'm just going to measure each one of these and these should be somewhere about 2.8 because they're the thicker ones. 2.84, 2.88, 2.8, so that's the service limit that one. 2.85, 2.9, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.9, 2.83, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 2.42, 2.43, 2.44, 2.45, 2.46, 2.47, 2.48, 2.49, 2.50, 2.51, 2.52, 2.53, 2.54, 2.55, 2.56, 2.57, 2.58, 2.59, 2.60, 2.61, 2.62, 2.63, 2.64, 2.65, 2.66, 2.67, 2.68, 2.69, 2.70, 2.71, 2.72, 2.73, 2.74, 2.75, 2.76, 2.77, 2.78, 2.79, 2.80, 2.81, 2.82, 2.83, 2.84, 2.85, 2.86, 2.87, 2.88, 2.89, 2.90, 2.91, 2.92, 2.93, 2.94, 2.95, 2.96, 2.97, 2.98, 2.99, 2.10, 2.11, 2.12, 2.13, 2.14, 2.15, 2.16, 2.17, 2.18, 2.19, 2.20, 2.21, 2.22, 2.23, 2.24, 2.25, 2.26, 2.27, 2.28, 2.29, 2.30, 2.31, 2.32, 2.33, 2.34, 2.35, 2.36, 2.37, 2.38, 2.39, 2.40, 2.41, 
two mil, two mil, two mil, two mil, 1.5 mil convex, 1.5 mil flat. And that's how my pack's made up. So let's just put this back together in the correct order. So one friction, one steel, one friction, one steel. Oh, hang on a second. I'll mix that up. That's right, sorry. Sorry. You can see the convex plate because it's got a slight bit more wear down here. I put another steel in against that one. Then friction, steel, friction, steel, friction, steel, friction, steel friction steel friction just double check the measurement on the pack Not comfortable free 38.1 still so pack is within spec let's just go give the clutch a quick clean up okay so looking inside the clutch there's the main clutch nut spring posts these are the slipper ramps and they have these little ball bearings that sit within the ramp the clutch hub has got corresponding ramps so all i'm going to do is just quickly just give these a quick clean out and likewise the back of here just so that we get rid of any of the errant dirt that sits in there so let's quickly do that Right, so we're gonna start reassembling this. First thing we've got to do is get the little ball bearings back into their sockets. And they need to be lubricated slightly with some high temperature grease. So all I'm gonna do, get a little dab of grease onto the ball bearing, stick it in, and not only does that hold it in place for the reassembly, but also then lubricates the ball bearing on its little ramp. Let's do that. Just to show what we've done, you are talking a very small amount of grease just to hold the ball bearing in place, okay? And then when we stick, let's get this around the right way, bigger holes for the posts. That will just mean that you stop the ball bearings dropping out. Okay, so let's get all the clutch pack. Let's get the clutch pack put back in now. Then a little bit of um, silicon grease on the end of the clutch push rod. And that's because there's a little seal inside there that if, um, if that runs dry, it can seize up and overheat the plate, uh, overheat the clutch bearing. Okay, and the clutch spring bolts are done up to eight newton meters, which is um, really just a firm tighten up. So nip it and just a little bit of little bit of pressure on. So that's the clutch plates back in and the clutch back together. All I need to do now is just check that I get a range of movement enough when I pull the clutch lever in. So let's just quickly check that. So we're looking for at least a millimeter of movement, and I've certainly got that there. So. That takes all the pressure off of the pack and allows it to disengage properly. Okay, so we know we've got that correct. Let's stick the cover back on and that's the clutch service done. Okay, clutch cover back on, bolts being six mil, just 10 newton meters, all done. Let's just tidy up around this side. Okay, next job is to replace the fuel filter inside the fuel pump assembly in the fuel tank using a Marley KL145. This is the OEM fuel filter just not marked Ducati and that saves you about 50% on the cost so goes without saying empty the fuel tank what I tend to do because you always get a little residual piece of fuel left in there just tip the tank up on its side so 
there are three bolts that secure the pump in so we need to undo these and then what we're going to do is use some six mil bolts to jack the fuel pump assembly out okay let's get these three bolts off first What I forgot to also point out, if you're wondering how to get fuel out, I use a fuel transfer pump, but you can use this little drain plug on the bottom of the fuel tank. So it's at the lowest point and it gets rid of it all. Okay, so with the fuel pump retaining bolts out, what we're gonna do is evenly just turn down on these bolts and lift this pump out in an even manner so that we don't distort the fuel pump seat and don't damage the seal that sits inside there as well. So let's go ahead and do that now. Okay, so this is the fuel pump assembly. What you've got here is the main pressure lines. So you've got the output, which comes from the sump of the fuel pump into the fuel pump out through the fuel filter and down, okay? This here is a swell pot for the, when it overpressures. So you've got the pressure relief valve that sits inside this line. When the pump hits its operating pressure, it just discharges up into here. This swells around to eliminate any air and then discharges out the top back into the fuel tank. You can see that um, this fuel tank has been sealed before, which is a bit of a worry. Okay, what I need to do is get the fuel filter out. So. I need to undo this clamp here, this clamp here, and then I've got to just loosen off the bracket bolt that sits in there so that I can get the fuel filter off. Okay, so let's quickly do that. Right, what you'd have just seen me do is I've just cleaned out the sump where the fuel pump sucks from. Uh, there was quite a bit of dirt in there. Then the filter only goes on one way, so make sure you get it the right way round. And as I said, this, this line is the outline, nicely marked there. So you know that from a flow point of view, we are sticking that down into there, then pushing that on. and tighten up. And re-tighten the fuel filter clamp. Okay, and then just while you got it out, just make sure all of the fittings are good and tight. So this is the, um, this line here is normally the drain that goes to your fuel filler neck. It's looped here because obviously I I don't worry about pump gas, so everything looks okay. What I'm gonna do now is just clean up all this gunk so that I know I've got a clean seat and face in there. So let's just remove these bolts and do that. Okay, so fuel pumps cleaned up. Um, what I've done is there's a new seal there. I'll just try and get that bit of fluff off. The seat and the mount mounting faces are clean. This face is clean as well. What I've noticed and why it might be sealed is there's some minor score marks in the tank, although it looks concentric. So I'm going to use seal oil, which is a fuel tank sealer, which is petrol resistant. I'm just going to bung a bit of that around the perimeter of this and then on the seal and the pump face just to ensure I also get a seal. Just pushed on now. What I'm going to do is put the three bolts in and just tighten those down. Okay, these bolts get done up to 10 newton meters, so let's just quickly torque those down. Okay, so that fuel sealer that I've put around the perimeter of the fuel seal needs 24 hours to cure, so I'm just gonna leave that sat up like this now with no contact with the fuel, and I'll stick that back on once, once we're all done. Okay, on with the next job. So, I'm gonna service the forks. So what I'm gonna need to do is brace the bike so I can lift the front end up. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go off the supporting trusses that we've got in this in this garage at quite an angle across a couple of them so that the so that the bike is equally supported. And then 
take the front fit well sorry I'll take the fairing off and the air tubes off first so I can get access to the frame easily and then I'll talk you through how we take the forks and everything out okay let's do that quickly okay because the way that my garage is configured I'm able to support the bike without the need for a under fork stand because I don't have a hole drilled in the bottom of the yokes wheel is free to turn so what I'm going to do I've already loosened this because it needed a bit of torque but I'm just going to pull off the brake calipers first right, both calipers just tied out of the way so that they don't get damaged I loosened off the wheel nut while it was on the ground so this is and do the fork pinch bolts which are 12 mil okay so you see I've just taken the mud guard off what I need to do now to get the forks out is loosen off the yokes then I'll drop it slightly and then loosen off the clip-ons so I can get easier access to them than when they're where they currently are now top tip I've got suspension vice but if you're gonna be doing this yourself you need to loosen this cap before you pull the fork out and the way to do that is just loosen that top bolt off first then undo your cap then you can undo the rest of it and pull it out okay so I'm just gonna pull out this first fork here and I'll do it one fork at a time so I'll always leave one fork in so let's get this left hand fork off okay fork is in so first thing we need to do is just make a record of where we've got all our settings because I'm going to fully back all this off so I'm going to back off the rebound back off the compression that's up in there back off all of the preload before I fully take this cap off so let's just get all of those done is undone you'll see it was a little bit sticky <laughs> um, so I just put a little bit of heat on there nothing major just enough to just to expand it a little bit so that I could just free it up what we need to do now is get this preloader cap assembly off so we need to compress the spring that sits inside the forks to expose to expose a nut that sits behind there so what I'm going to do is I've got a special compressor tool I'm just going to connect that up and then we'll we'll wind that down okay so what you can see is it's just exposed two nuts basically one there which we're going to undo and this one which we're just going to hold as we undo it okay so let's just go ahead and do that So that's the cap off with the rebound rod. Okay, let's just loosen our spring compressor off now. Okay, so the components as they've come out, got a little metal collar, plastic collar, fork spacer and wiper, you just see that there, no, sorry spring spacer and wiper, uh, the spring itself, a seat shim and then a spacer that goes underneath it. What I'm just doing is letting it, letting the oil just drain out at the moment. It was nice and clean, what you should get towards the end of the stroke as you can start seeing there that's coming out now is all of the uh, debris and dirt okay next job we need to get the fork leg off 
and what you'll see is when it gets to there it stops hear that metallic sort of click that's because there's a bush in on the top of the inner stanchion so the this piece and it's hitting against one that sits in the leg as well all right so what we've got to give is just a firm tug and that will just come out so let me do that so i've taken out the lip seal it's just a screwdriver what i'm going to do is just take out that little retaining clip carefully there okay so just prise that off so all i've got to do is just give that a bit of a firm tug and that should come out so let's just do that okay so this is the fork stanchion as you would see it in its stripped down state so you've got the bush that sits on the stanchion the bush that goes inside the fork leg and then you've got a mounting collar and then you've got the oil seal for the fork leg its retaining clip and then the wiper seal or dust seal whatever people would like to call that okay so what I need to do is just take all these pieces off and then give everything a damn good clean okay as well as cleaning the fork leg what you want to do is look for any damage in the uh, fork leg coating that's in the swept areas so this this one looks quite good but what's what's worth doing uh, <laughs> <laughs> little bit of 600 grit just give it a good clean spinning it round all right just for those that are concerned that's just there loose it's just so i can hold that fork leg what i'm going to do is just give this a clean out make sure all the mounting faces for everything are good okay i also just gave a little bit of a bougie just to get rid of the last bit of dirty oil that was in uh, the fork leg what we've got to do now is put everything back together in the order it needs to be in for it to go back on the bike. The challenge that we've got is this is a sharp face to get the seals past so you can damage the seals going past this. So what I'm just showing you here is that um, the kit that I've got has what they call this seal buddy or it's a like cleaning tool but what it also acts as is a nice barrier to stop damage when you slide that over so I just wanted to show you that before I grease it up because it will get a little bit messy so I want to put a little stab of grease on the back face of this seal so that's the sort of mount seal uh, grease that you're putting in not masses just enough to help overcome stiction two ways the seal can go on so you've got an open side and a closed side. This should be facing down. So this is the back of the sill. This is the front of the sill. So make sure you get that round the right way. What I'm gonna do is just inside here, inside the two wiping faces, just pack that with a little bit of grease as well. So everything's assembled, ready to go back onto the bike. Uh, sorry, back onto the <laughs> fork leg. Oh, speak some sense, Adam. Right, so you've got the top sliding bush. Oh. You've got the top sliding bush for the stanchion. You've got the inner sliding bush that goes inside the outer stanchion and allows this to run along. You've got the oil ring back in washer, that uh, oil seal back in washer. You've then got the oil seal, the oil seal retaining clip, and then the dust seal stroke wiper seal, whatever you term it. Okay. So we've got to put this all into here. So you'll see that you've got a seat in face there for the bush. This is where the oil seal will go. Okay, with the retaining clip piece, and then the dust seal will go against this top face. I'm just going to warm it back up again. I, I did start warming it up. It's so cold here, it's losing its heat quickly. That's only just to expand this tube ever just so ever so slightly so that it's just a little bit easier 
to get the bushes back into the fork stanchion. Okay, so let's do that now. Okay, that was my least favorite part, is bashing the sills back in. Um, so that's in. What I've got to now do is top up the fork leg with fresh oil. So um, it is 492 cc's worth of oil, but more importantly, there's an air gap that we need to put into this as well. So it's 132 millimeter air gap. I'm just gonna double check the manual. Um, just to ensure that I've got the right one because there's so many different versions of these show forks and that helps us set the air gap or some people call that the air spring so air gap or air spring however however you term it in your um, country or in the way that you work with suspension so I'm going to be using Silkaline RS5 okay so this is a five weight oil now there's an interesting discussion point and tip here that I should make is that every company's weight is different um, and there is a uh, uh, it's not written on here unfortunately um, so there's like a coefficient of uh, I think it's a coefficient of stiction number they call it that you need to check against each of the fork oils to ensure that the weight that you're putting in is similar to the weight that you've taken out so this is a CS of 22 and the casual advance fork oil which is a seven and a half weight oil has got the same stiction as this so this is what I'm going to be using what I'm going to do is just measure out um, the amount of volume that I need I'm going to go over so I'm going to put 500 mil in which is half of this container and then I'll suck out the rest to get the air gap correct so let's just do that the other thing to advise um, the other thing to advise is if there's lots and lots of air in the uh, fork oil just wait a little bit before you put it in Okay, having put the oil in, you've got to work the damper assembly backwards and forwards. So you want to be feeling resistance in both directions as you're pumping it. And then it should just drop under control when it's done. So that's looking quite good. Okay, I'm going to set our air gap. It's uh, just basically a great big syringe. So what I need to do, using this stop, is set the depth to 132 millimeters. Just double check that. Yep. Then for these fork legs, you measure the air gap with all of the springs and spacers out. So let's just do that quickly. Sorry, and I should have pointed out that your outer tube should be at the bottom of its travel. You'll know when you've got the fork level correct because the syringe just sucks air and it's as simple as that. Now all we need to do is put all of these parts back in. So we need to just give them a quick rinse and clean over because they're dirty and then we'll stick them in and it'll be this first, then that spacer, then the spring, then the top spacer, then this, then the leg. There you go, one, one fork leg completely together. 
What I'm just going to quickly check before I put the settings back in is that there's just no stiction. So what effectively that means do is I'm just going to bounce on top of it, up and down on top of it on the ground, make sure I've got full swipe and then it comes back in a controlled manner. Okay, fork leg done. What I'm going to do, stick that back into the bike and then I won't film doing the other one but I'm going to do the other fork and then um, I'll start filming again once I'm in a position to start bolting everything back together. But let's get this fork in for now. Okay, fork leg in. 14 newton meters, 23 newton meters, 10 newton meters. Okay, what I'm gonna do off camera is I'm just gonna do the other fork leg and then I'll come back to you and I'm just putting it all back together. Okay, so back again. Um, right hand fork has been done what i must mention because if some of you are taking these apart you would have noticed i missed a washer up the top there um, which i've subsequently taken the fork on and put it back on as i was putting this uh, cap back together um, when i was pushing it back into the fork body i hadn't realized that the washer that was on the little white spacer cap that sits between the preload adjuster and the top of the spring spacer i dropped it so <laughs> As I was just finishing off, I noticed it on the floor, so I had to take that cap back off and just quickly put that back in. But okay, so all all the forks all really nice refurbished, nice and clean, no stiction problems. Just gonna put the front end of the bike back together now quickly. Okay, just uh, finished putting the front end together. So 25 newton meters, 63 newton meters, 43 newton meters, 10 newton meters. And that's the front wheel assembly back in. Put the air tubes back on, master fairings on. I'm just gonna top the oil up, but I'm not gonna film that because you've seen it often enough, I should imagine. And I've got to wait for the fuel tank to seal where I put that additional sealing in. So. That will go on tomorrow and then so with the fairing and next time you'll see the bike will hopefully be at the track okay there we have it um service done ready for the first outing um <laughs> still still a few little odds and sods to do but nothing that i feel is worth filming because it's all stuff that you would have seen in other of my build videos anyway when i was putting the bike back together so i've just got to top the oil up put the rear wheel back on stick the fuel tank on and stick the bodywork on um, I've got to dial in the settings for the suspension, but I'll do that when I get to track. Uh, and I've also got to top the water up, but with the cold weather at the moment, I'm going to leave that to the last minute as well, because you don't put antifreeze in race bikes, you just put water in. So today we covered off servicing uh, a slipper clutch, a four post slipper clutch with ball and ramp, so type slipper action in there. So we checked all of the plate thicknesses, the overall pack thickness, greased up the ramps and the ball bearings and then stuck that back together. Um, I've changed over the fuel filter in the fuel pump and then done a bush and seal change on the front forks as well as a uh, fork oil change. So that's it for now. Um, almost at the thousand subscriber mark. So thank you very much for watching. Really glad you're enjoying the content and subscribed. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button that's going to come up in a second and please do join and subscribe plenty more content to come and uh, also chuck a like down below as well any questions or comments please feel free to ask and i'll try and answer as quickly as i can and once again thanks for watching see you next time bye